Today on Art Scene will feature the tattoo artistry of Street Art Inc. from the body to the wall. A local collaborative dance piece, When the Light Comes, an annual outdoor digital celebration, Supernova Animation Festival, Denver Zoo takes a field trip to the Denver Art Museum for Stampede Animals in Art, plus the Denver Art Museum celebrates its 125th anniversary. I'm Bobby Lefebvre and welcome to Art Scene. Tattoos take center stage as the McNichols Civic Center building has been transformed by Street Art Inc. from the body to the wall. And as someone with a few tattoos myself, I can relate. Let's learn more. We're kind of in the process of doing a full, full leg sleeve on Heather. So we've been working on it off and on for four or five months or so. Yeah, and what's the design? What's the uh, what's the piece? It well, it's, it's a lot of stuff. It's kind of a Japanese style motif with a large snake and flowers and water, clouds. Typical Japanese style stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it's become more out in the open, but I think it's more approachable than some people think it is. I think some people are very intimidated to come and get a tattoo, but. I think it's, uh, most tattooers are, are much more friendly and you know, there's um, a million different styles you can choose from. Now doctors and lawyers and teachers and pastors and so everybody gets tattooed now and they're open with it. Yeah. Go to the post office and the guy's sleeve, tattoos on his neck. Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't see that 25 years ago. You really get to know somebody when you do tattoos on them because it's a very personal experience. It's like a very uh, vulnerable like position to be in to let someone do something permanent on your skin. We really wanted to highlight unusual art forms that maybe are not normally considered to be fine art. So uh, tattoos, murals, and how we can showcase how they, there might be some overlap between the two of them. So working with Mary Valdez and then working specifically with one photographer, Richard Todd, from LA. Well, I was really honored to be a part of the um, beginning days of the Urban Arts Fund where we felt like, you know, how can we prevent graffiti and vandalism in the city of Denver? So we felt like if we give artists, you know, money, uh, they can create beautiful murals in the city of Denver to help curb graffiti and vandalism. And I feel like we've been really successful. Like Sandy Calistro, for instance. I mean, she's a tattooist. She's been doing this for quite some time. And in my opinion, she's one of the best. Yeah. I love it that she's a female. Uh, but then also, I mean, the quality of work is so high, uh, where we've utilized her work also uh, in murals and in some of our other exhibitions, so it's fun. I've been doing murals with the city of Denver for about seven or eight years now, and it's just something I like to do on the side to change it up. Um, I'm also a painter, so I just need a little bit of, of that in my life as well as tattooing, I think, too. They kind of like feed each other, and yeah. it's, it's nice to have the two different types of arts. Uh, so what did you paint? What was the inspiration for the image on your mural? Um, for the McNichols building, they were asking for like a tattoo-inspired mural, so I did a kind of one of my signature women with like the big eyes, and I did a few tattoos on her. You know, I know you have tattoos, I have tattoos. I think everybody's pain threshold is different, but what is the, the consensus on how it feels to get tattooed? Um, I've mostly heard that it hurts pretty bad, honestly. Um, I think I have had a, a handful of customers who say that it's not very painful, and I just don't believe it. It's very <laughs> painful for me, so. <laughs> I agree with you. Yeah. I agree with you. But, I mean, there's something cathartic about it, too, so. Yeah. It's but I, I've never gotten a tattoo and thought that it was enjoyable. But everybody's different, so. Yes, no, I'm, I'm in your camp. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now, Richard Todd has been shooting body art for 40 plus years. 
Um, he's been featured in all kinds of magazines. What I love about Richard's work is that they are studio shots. Gives it a little more elevation from a street shot that you might have um, just of a skateboarder with a tattoo. Mm -hmm. And it's a really unique mashup of sort of, you know, starting with indigenous forms of tattooing and body modification to more American traditional and Japanese traditional. There's so many different genres and styles within the tattoo community. What was the importance of really showing that diversity of, of those styles? I think there's a story be behind every person's tattoo. Um, when you see them grouped together and you learn more about that particular um, social context for why that tattoo came about, it draws you in even more. So for example, Cholo Tats, those tattoos are not by a tattooer that's known at all. Those are all done in prison. Mm -hmm. The Polynesian tattoos, those are done as a a sign of maturity, a, a passing. Sure. A lot of American ones are that way for personal reasons. What we see in the Japanese style are generations of tattooists that share that knowledge and history down from one generation to the next. Tattooing is a very personal yeah. art form, right? These tattooers right. are, um, they're putting something on someone's body that's permanent, you know? And, and uh, there's also something uh, very public about that though, because people are walking around with these personal stories on their bodies. Right. What has been the reception from people that you've talked to around um, taking this art form that is considered at one point sort of a subculture art form that's now become more widespread? What has the reception been from people who have seen this? Really, I think we're getting a lot of positive feedback. What I've heard from the public is sometimes I think they view us with the city as being very conservative. Mm. And I kind of feel like now, you know, in 2018, we have the capacity to just kind of step outside of that envelope to just say, hey, we're really bridging that gap, you know, with the city and with, you know, uh, the tattooist and bringing that community and really embracing that quality of artwork because it's, it's phenomenal. Why do you like doing it? What's the importance of, of tattoos and, and how, how do you view it as, as an art form? Well, I guess the, the biggest difference is, the, you know, the permanence. And I think that was, early on, that was both something I both liked and was terrified of. You know, when I first started tattooing, I was, the first hundred tattoos I did, I just couldn't stop thinking the entire time, like, mm -hmm. oh man, yeah, this is forever. Yes. And you worked with some uh, models recently for a, a runway show, for a mm. tattoo runway fashion show. What was that like? How many did you work with and what did you provide for them? I was fortunate enough to tattoo some really cool people and they let me do some really cool stuff. And that's you know, one of the things that keeps me going too is people allowing me the honor of doing these large, giving me entire limbs. That's never gotten, that's never, you know, I've never gotten past that, how much of an honor. and. Mm -hmm. Even 25 years later, it's still, someone says they, they give me their whole back or their whole arm or both their legs. It's an incredible feeling. Yeah, no, what a cool experience to be able to come to work every day and be surrounded by art and artists and people totally. who are, you know, willing to, you know, adopt that art onto their bodies. That's, that's amazing. Well, thanks to Heather for sitting there through the, uh, the interview here while getting some... Uh... I think she's asleep. <laughs> thanks for having us. Appreciate Absolutely. It. Alright, we will have more with Street Art Inc. later in our show. But next up, Stampede Animals in Art is a new exhibit at the Denver Art Museum that's all about how animals have captivated artists throughout history. And with this animal theme, the curators at the Denver Zoo and Denver Art Museum got to swap places for a day. They shared their unique perspectives on the ways that animals have shown up in art throughout centuries and across cultures. Hi, my name is John Lukovic. I'm curator of Native Arts at the Denver Art Museum, and I'm the organizing curator of Stampede Animals in Art. I'm Brian McCone from Denver Zoo. I'm the Vice President of Animal Sciences with the zoo, and I'm here today at the Denver Art Museum looking at the Stampede Animals in Art exhibit uh, that is opened here.
I'm taking some time today to, to look through and think about it from the eyes of somebody who's a conservationist and somebody who comes from a conservation organization and thinking about both the beauty of the art but also what it tells you as a scientist and, and what that means in the natural world. And that's what really what Stampede is about, is looking at the connections between humans and animals in a variety of different ways. And it's interesting to call this the peaceable kingdom because from my perspective when I look at this from a natural history perspective is this wouldn't be very peaceful. Um, there's predators and there's prey here and uh, this would not go well for some of them and would go very well for others. Bears are strong, they're fierce warriors, um, you know there's a lot of attributes associated with them that uh, individuals won't, would want to harness in some way. Uh, sometimes they're, they're viewed as uh, tot totemic animals. Um, you'll see bears represented in um, you know ev everywhere from the the northeast to the northwest coast to the um, you know various other parts of the United States. Our native arts collection at the Denver Art Museum is so strong in the subject of animals because animals are across the board incredibly important to communities all across Native North America. Uh, but these are interesting to me because we have Sheswalski's horses at Denver Zoo uh, and they're, those horses are the originators, that species is the originators of all of the horses that we have um, uh, in human care at this point in time. It's an interesting connection um, that uh, all of this art that you can see goes back to one species. A great exhibition and cultural swap. The exhibit will be on display through May 19th, 2019, but that's not all. The Denver Art Museum is also celebrating its 125th anniversary, on December 4th to be exact. We'll have much more art scene on the other side, including more of Street Art Inc. from the body to the wall, when the light comes, and Supernova Outdoor Digital Animation Festival. And we are back on art scene. Next up, a collaborative dance piece between a bunch of local talents, including a composer, a choreographer, filmmakers, and dancers with the Colorado Ballet, when the light comes.
every year, there's a fun outdoor celebration of digital animation. It takes place in September at the Denver Theater District. So here's a look at the Supernova Outdoor Digital Animation Festival. Supernova came into my head, you know, an explosion of light in the sky that fades from memory over a brief period of time. Supernova is the first ever outdoor digital animation festival in the world. We have the luxury of using LED screens in downtown Denver, and we call it the next evolution of public art. We're so fortunate to be able to put this together because of funds that have been generously donated to us. The first would be the Denver Theater District. Uh, this year we had Arts and Venues Denver jump on board with a major grant through their Next Stage Now program. We have CU Denver and their College of Arts and Media, Bonfi Stanton Foundation, Weed and Law, Orange Barrel Media, Branded Cities as a sponsor. If it wasn't for them, we'd never be able to do this. I'm the sort of person that likes to push the envelope a little bit. We're ramping up this year with 11 hours of content. Like to me, the light bulb went off in my head. Technology is changing the art field and in a way that is utterly fascinating. They get to see this great content on a giant screen. It's an awesome experience. We're gonna have three presentations by each of our jurors. Jonathan Monahan, Claudia Mate, Morishin Eliari. These are three of the top individuals in the world that are working in digital media as artists. Forgot to point out Milton Melvin Croissant here. This guy is a huge inspiration to this project. You're gonna see a video of his that he did with Thug and Trancer. They'll be the grand finale of the project tomorrow night. We're really pushing this thing to, I think, become something bigger. We always get great press. I think our crowd increases over the years, and you know, this year is just, for me, is a huge thrill. It's a big evolution into the digital sphere, and hopefully uh, this will set the tone for next iteration. And now, more from Street Art Inc. from the body to the wall, The Runway Show. It's a very personal style that I've sort of worked on for 30 years, photographing these people. I think it has to do with a collaboration of the photographer and the um, model, per se, because they're not models. They're regular people like you and I. And so they've never done that before. So it's making them comfortable in front of the camera and then provoking a reaction that the click of the shutter then freezes. We've got a runway exhibition. We're gonna have live models who are just typical people, you know, that have incredible works of art all over their body. Bringing in a, a designer who will actually create the wardrobe for the models, hair, makeup, and the whole bit. I think it's just, it's something to just really be celebrated and I'm really excited about it.
I was able to design around their tattoos because I wanted to emphasize their color and the style and stuff. So I kind of um, just designed around everything. It was a little bit challenging because I'm not used to doing stuff like that. I actually had to like downsize on a lot of design and stuff. So. <laughs> People are making lots of choices about like how they want their worlds, their histories represented, and then like and who they align with. So I think it's really amazing that most of the people who are here have also voiced that they found a family and a community in in the tattooing community. So it's a really special living form of art that has a really organic and growing community around it. And I think there's a lot to be found and a lot of healing to be found in this community. And I think it's beautiful to be able to highlight it in this way. Something else that's very unique is when you have a city that shows up for all the different types of art forms that the people um, respect and represent. So this is also just like another way in which I feel like Denver is really front-facing, people-facing, trying to also introduce and highlight arts that the people care about. So I, I think it's really special when a city does that, and not every city does. So I think I'm also just really honored to be here on a night like with a city that really does care. So yeah, it's been amazing. We have enjoyed sharing the ancient and modern art form of tattooing with you. You can see Street Art Inc. from the body to the wall at the McNichols Building through January 6, 2019. I'm Bobby Lefebvre. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time as we discover more of Denver's art scene.